like in every good Orthodox conversation, you always go back to Genesis 1, 2, and 3. And here we're going to talk specifically about the fall of humanity. How it is that in Genesis chapter 3, we see humanity embracing what is not supposed to be taken in by them. That they choose for themselves a source of both knowledge, existential and intellectual, that was never meant for them to be able to take in outside of God. They chose to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And in so doing, in allowing sin to enter into creation, humanity now also allows all of the repercussions of what it means for us to live in separation, alienation from God. So, for us to be able to dive deeper, let's go again and see how it is that the early church interprets those passages of Genesis 1, 2, and 3. And specifically, what happens to humanity when we were first created by God? And then what happens to humanity when we are alienated and separated from God? St. John Chrysostom in his homilies on the statues says the following about if we return to paradise, what would we see? He says, if you wish to know the state of our body, as it left the hands of God, return to paradise and behold the man whom God had just placed there. His body was not subject to corruption. Like a statue taken from the kiln that shines most brightly, he experienced none of the infirmities that we know in our day. So according to St. John, if you were to go back to paradise and see what God's intention and purpose in creating humanity looked like, then you would see humanity, Adam and Eve, completely devoid of any form of disease or illness, never having to suffer the illnesses that we see today in our reality. But rather, and what he is very clearly implying here, is that this was a consequence of the fall. So we see this in discussing how it is that humanity had limitless possibilities, but it was sin and its entrance into our reality that really removed from us the possibilities of living a state of eternity and immortality with God, our Creator. St. Augustine, in his, uh, in his writings on the literal meaning of Genesis, Listen to what he has to say. He says, until sin entered in, the human body could be qualified in one sense as mortal, and in another sense as immortal. Mortal because it was capable of dying, and immortal because it could have not died. By refraining from sin, it could have avoided death. The human being was created in free will to be able to choose for themselves what they wanted that they want to be able to achieve the limitless possibilities of what it would have looked like for them to embrace growing in the likeness of God and remaining in constant union with Him? Or would they choose to be independent of God and potentially even worship themselves, choosing that they would have their own knowledge and not have to depend on God? And in so doing, they would could they introduce death into their reality rather than potentially choosing to eat from the tree of life and thus giving them the possibility of eternal life and in union with God. So in understanding this, we then have to ask the question, what happens when humanity chose sin? What, what is it that broke down in our nature? And this is typically what the church calls corruption. Now, when we speak of corruption, ultimately what this means is that we are saying that humanity that was, stated in, it was created in a state of incorruption, and we'll see this how it's referenced every single time we pray the liturgy of St. Basil, but humanity in choosing sin to disobey God, to separate themselves from God, now allow corruption to enter into their very reality and in their nature. St. Athanasius on the incarnation of the word he says the following, he says, knowing that man's free will could have inclined him to one choice or the other, God took the initiative and strengthened the grace that he had given man by providing him with the commandment already in the garden. In that way, insofar as man preserved that grace and dwelt in virtue, he would know in paradise a life free from sadness, from pain, from anxiety, together with the promise of immortality in heaven. But if man transgressed that commandment, he would know that in death he would experience the corruption of his nature and that he would no longer live in paradise, but would have been expelled to die and to dwell henceforth in death and in corruption. The decision was left up to the human being. The human being, rather than choosing to remain in a state of union with God, to remain in a state where he would constantly have eternal life and incorruption, rather, the decisions that were made by our forefathers, Adam and Eve, landed us in a state now where 
we have to suffer the consequences of a corrupt human nature. And so, in addressing this subject of corruption, I would like us to be able to learn from a, a, an incredible theologian of the Eastern Church who is also a very learned scholar by the name of Jean-Claude Larcher. Jean-Claude Larcher writes this beautiful book called The Theology of Illness, where he really unpacks the understanding of illness and how it is that God's initial, initial intention for creation of the human being was not that we suffer the realities that we suffer today in the forms of illnesses and diseases and corruption, but rather we were created for something so much more. The way that he defines the term corruption is twofold. Let's take a look at it together. So he said there's two distinct meanings. Number one is on the one hand, corruption can simply designate the, the meaning of what it means for us to be able to begin to dissolve uh, at the level of the body after we die. Because we were created with matter that is finite, that is temporal, naturally, when we die, the human being decomposes and there is a dissolution of the body after we die. The second level of corruption that is extremely important for us to understand, he says, is any kind of alteration of the body and in the broader sense of the soul. The second meaning can refer to illnesses, suffering, fatigue, and the like. This form of corruption that he refers to is exactly what was introduced into the reality of the human being once we allowed to sin, for sin to enter into creation.